So then moving on to our, our final segment of, of this podcast recording episode, we are going to be talking about Najee Harris to the 49ers, where the Niners trade back into the back end round of the first, you know, somewhere between like 20 to 32, I'd guess, is probably where he's going to get taken. Um, I think that hopefully you kind of trade before a couple teams like the Bucks, the Steelers. You know, there's a couple teams in there that I think might definitely take him. So you might see the Niners want to hop in and do that. But let's just talk about the draft capital first. Aiden, what do you think it would cost the Niners to move from 43 to, let's say, I don't know, 23, like somewhere around there, like early 20s? Um, Let me look real quickly because that sounds similar to what they did last year for Ayuk. Last year to get from 31 to 25, they gave up 117 and 176. So they probably have to give up the third rounder and maybe even a later pick, maybe one of those fifth rounders. Um, But to get a guy like Najee Harris, I would love to see it. It's some, it's a pick that I think would be exciting and brings another guy to that running back room. I don't know if it's going to happen. I know that Najee came out and said that, um, he talked to the Niners pretty extensively and thought that there was a chance that they would pick him at 12. Um, but I'm really confident in the 49ers running back room right now. I think Mostert and Wilson do very different things and do them both very well. Um, but if you want to bring a guy like Najee in, who's kind of a blend of both those those two guys, would love to see it. Um, and I think Shanahan can turn a running back into an even better running back just through his system. Um, yeah, and I mean, we see, saw how good Najee Harris was at Alabama. Exactly, exactly. So imagine that guy in in the Shanahan system behind that offensive line. Super exciting. Um, and you said it was 117 and 176 that they traded? Correct. So the 31, Niners have one... 117, 176 to get to 25, so to move up six spots. Okay, okay. So it'd be a little... It probably costs a little bit more, but the Niners have 117 again this year. Like, maybe you see a... A 117 and I don't know a 150. I, I know what it is. What whatever they need to do to do it. I mean, you can always make it work. I feel like with draft capital, especially because they have a lot of their picks moving forward. Besides the first rounder, so that's where I think a lot of people are going to be skeptical. Um, and I understand being skeptical. I understand not wanting to go and take a running back round one. And, and you know, you're talking about like, oh, you know, like they have Raheem Mostert, you have Jeff Wilson, you have a good backfield, and you have an interesting case in Jamichael Hasty behind them. And we've, I think the big thing is we've seen so many running backs flourish in Kyle Shanahan's system. Hey, why not take a guy in the fourth round? Why not take him in the fifth round? He could be really good. The reason why I like this is because, to me, this is the ultimate swing for – and this is if you take a Justin Fields or a Trey Lance at three. We're trying to build the greatest rushing offense of all time. I think that's what this is. And I think there's reason to, to say that, that they could make that case. Najee Harris – should absolutely be a hit in the first round at running back. I know people hate the idea of drafting running back. Drafting a running back is different than paying a running back. I'm not for paying a running back. And I even, and like Christian McCaffrey, I think is a different case, but then look at Christian McCaffrey last year. He gets hurt right after he signs that big deal. So I think that drafting a running back and drafting one at the end of the first round is a, is a big time move. Like I love that. Um, So if they could make it work and get him, and then you have, just let's say Justin Fields at quarterback, Najee Harris at running back, your fullbacks, Kyle Juszczyk, your tight ends, George Kittle, the best run blocking tight end in the game currently. Your two tackles are Mike McGlinchey and Trent Williams. You have Debo Samuel, who, I mean, he's, he can be a fullback. Um, I mean, we've seen him like in these weird situations where, where he's doing stuff like that. And then who's your, who's your head coach. That's, you know, also your offensive coordinator, pretty much Kyle Shanahan, who's, the Shanahan system is pretty much known as this is the best running system in the sport. Why would that running offense not be the best ever? That, that that's my question about this move. I, I think it's I think it's a swing for the fences, but I think it's definitely worth it in my opinion. So Jake, after kind of hyping up the move, what, what do you think about the idea? I actually love it, and I think that there's actually a higher chance this happening. I think if Trey Lance is drafted than Justin Fields because. Trey Lance is already coming out of an offense that's heavily, you know, read option, um, you know, RPO heavy, that kind of thing. And I think that let's just assume, you know, they're tailoring this offense to their future quarterback. Well, there's no running backs under contract on this roster past 2022. Najee, you draft him in the first, he's here for the next five, uh, assuming you pick up his option. 
And, you know, you do want that. You want to keep the same core around your young quarterback. You don't want this evolving or excuse me, revolving door around your quarterback, especially regard in regards to weapons. We've kind of seen that with Mahomes now in Kansas City. They're really making it a priority to make sure Kelsey's there and Hill and Hardman. And, you know, they're keeping these guys around him. Even and I'll add even Watkins, they tried to keep around. I know he left now, but yeah. they've been like, oh, we got to hang on to him. You know, like we got to figure out a way to make it work. Yeah. And they're willing to sacrifice the O-line even for that because they feel that the weapons are more important than the offensive line because of his um, running ability. And that's something that you could see happen if Trey Lance gets drafted here. Now, regardless if Trey Lance is here or not, if let's just say the pick is Fields or Mac or whoever, um, the 49ers still want a running back. Like, they're, they reported last year if IU had gotten selected like a pick before, they were going to take Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at 31. So they want a first-round running back. Like, Kyle knows his guys. Like you said, like, he's this running back groomer. Like, he can turn, you know, milk into butter, essentially, at running back. And I I think that if they're, if he's falling into the right position at the back half, of the first round and they feel like they have the capital, which maybe it would be like their second rounder and a fifth or, you know, a three and a seven or, you know, some, I think it might even be more. I think it could be like a second and, and that's where it kind of, you kind of wonder what, what's happening with Jimmy too. I think that's part of this conversation as well, but I, th- I think it'd be a lot. I, I think it might be like a two and a three. Like I, I think it could be a hefty amount of capital, but I, I still think like, if you think it's worth it to take a guy like Najee Harris, that's sort of like, I get that it's going to be a lot and it's going to be like, oh my God, they just did all of this for a first round running back. But I think Najee is really special. So like, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, and it depends. Like if Kyle's like, well, I think Najee is special, but I think there's a guy that I can turn into 90% of him in the fifth round or whatever it is. And I think that's what like the argument is against doing something like this. But I just I, I want to see it, man. I, I want to see a, Kyle Shanahan have a superstar running back because I think that's what Najee Harris is. And I, I think the other thing, just real quick to add, it doesn't matter how many picks you have in, in a draft because no one remembers how many picks you have. They just want to see the home runs. If you go back to the 2017 draft, I mean, we had one home run in the entire draft and we had one guy who's st- – the other guy is still on the team out of what eight or nine picks I think we had that year so that was obviously a very wasteful and forgettable draft now in the years since we've not had as many picks but we've hit home runs like I would largely consider last year a success despite a um, you know minimal amount of picks you get Kinla you get Ayuk um, and then you you know you get some other depth guys to fill out the roster but you're happy with that because those are quality players if you fill in your picks with quality players, people don't care how many picks you have. Well, and you even brought up like, oh, like people want to see the home runs. And it kind of depends like what you define a home run. Cause like for me, like a guy like Drake Greenlaw, you're taking him in the fifth. That's a home run. Like that's, that's boom. You're, that's a massive hit, you know, like, and, and you could call it, you know, oh, it's like, it's a double equivalent or whatever. Cause I've seen people call it that. Like, um, cause I, I know that like when you, when a lot of people evaluate the Colts roster, they call it like, oh, you know, these guys just hit, keep hitting doubles. They just get solid player after solid player. I consider a guy that's a starting level player that's good, like depending on where you take him, I think that's a lot of it. Because a George Kittle, a Fred Warner, a Dre Green, like all those guys are taken late. Those are big hits, you know? So I think that's where it comes from. But as far as the Najee stuff goes, any, do you guys want to add anything else before we kind of take off here? Uh, Just to quickly touch on it. I mean, Kyle took Joe Williams. It obviously didn't work out. But I think a lot of the pushback that you're going to get against a, like a Najee Harris trade-up idea is that the Shanahans don't pick quarterbacks early. Well, there's a quarterback that you picked, obviously not the first round, but early. Um, but I you, mean, said, you mean running back? Yeah, sorry. Um, running back instead of quarterback, sorry. Um, but like we've had a lot of success with these later round guys. I wouldn't love a trade-up. I think if he's a spe- if if you think that he's a special guy obviously we've touched on this in an earlier podcast they are better evaluators of of, of talent than we are um so if you think that he's, he's a special guy do it um i don't see it quite yet 
I think he's a really, really good running back prospect. Would not trade up to pick him. If, if, if you're sitting there at pick 25, fine, take him. Um, but when you have other needs specifically at DB, interior D line, interior offensive line, um, like makes it a little like a much tougher to go back in and basically trade up when you're not going to get a guy like Kendrick Green or like that edge from Iowa. Um, those are guys who could be capable starters and you're really just not even giving your chance, not giving yourself a chance to swing later. Um, so just something oh, yeah. to basically keep I, in mind. I definitely understand the argument. And I think that's what a lot of people feel like. It, it's just, it's just interesting to see what will happen. I think, I mean, if it happens draft night, we're going to, we're going to be hyped. I mean, either way, you'd be like, Oh, Najee Harris. Oh my God. You know, freaking out. But it, it's just a fun little scenario, I think. And, and I, I, I talked about JC Horn the other day and, and that was another interesting one. Like how, how would you have to trade up for him? okay, you're probably going to have to move 43 and Jimmy or something to get to 15. You know, it's it's going to be like a lot of capital. And so it, it just it's really interesting, like a lot of these trade-ups. But I do think that you're going to see some, in some way, the 49ers trade-up. So I do expect that to happen just because, I, and I think, I don't know if we've talked about it on air, but they don't have many holes. Like they, they have a few, don't get me wrong. But they have a lot of veteran players and there's not many holes and they're trying to win now, or at least in the next couple of years, you know, they're trying to build a team like that. At least that's what it appears like. And so they're like, we got to hit these guys. We got to get big hits on these. You know, we got, we got to make that home run pick like you were saying, Jake. So I, I like that. And and that's, that's going to do it for today's episode. So first time watching you, you like our idea of this Najee Harris thing. Let us know. You don't like it. Let us know why too. Cause I think it's very, very interesting how it could play out, but, but that's going to do it for today's episode and, and make sure to subscribe and, like the video and do all that stuff. So we'll talk to you guys soon.